Okay, for the next phase of our project, we have uh, finished the floor, so we're gonna move on to uh, building the walls. Um, for this project, we have four walls, as you can see, they're already up. Um, and we have a few different components uh, to each wall. So to describe each wall just a little bit, our front wall here, um, we have a typical three foot um, exterior entry door um, that we're gonna frame in and then we're also gonna put the door in. Um, on this wall we have a 24 by 24 inch uh, window that we framed out and we're gonna put in. And then on this back wall here, we're gonna frame in um, basically a, a door or opening that's over six feet because we have a little bit um, different framing for the header. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we have one wall that's just um, plain. There's nothing going in it. Um, we'll um, show a basic framing tutorial with that. Um, on top of our walls, we also have our gable end walls. And once we get to the roof portion of, um, the roof framing portion of our project, we'll show you how to go ahead and frame those as well. Uh, but to, to get started, let's talk just a little bit about um, the anatomy of a wall. Um, basically, a wall has three different components. It has a bottom plate, um, which is this part that comes all the way across the bottom of the floor. It's what the wall, or it's what sits on the floor and uh, holds uh, the second component, which is the studs. That's all the vertical members in a wall. And then you also have um, your top plates. Um, so basically, it's just a big sandwich of bottom plate, top plate, and studs inside. There's a few other components. Uh, we'll get to those in a second. Um, but um, basically those are the three things that hold your wall together and uh, make, make your wall. Um, so the other few components inside a wall, um, you have a different couple names for a different, or a couple different studs. Um, you have your full studs or your king studs. Those are your studs that go all the way from your top plate all the way down to your uh, bottom plate. Then you have uh, your shoulder studs. Um, which are the studs that frame out your door opening and your header sits on top of your shoulder studs. This header uh, basically acts as a weight distributor. Um, we have, if you kind of look up here, we have our roof um, framing, our rafters, that's sitting right above our door and we need something to distribute that weight off to our shoulder studs. Um, so basically this header carries that weight. You have a point load coming down here and it carries the weight off to the side down our shoulder studs down to our floor and then our floor down to our foundation. Um, so these headers are real important to have in here. We also have these little guys. Um, they're also studs, what we call those cripple studs. A cripple stud is any stud that basically um, gets cut off with any framing in between like a header or a window sill. Um, so let's go over to our window here. We basically have the same framing as a door. We have our uh, king stud with our shoulder stud next to it and our header sitting on top with a cripple stud up there. The only addition basically is we have this sill which is basically the bottom of the window and then a longer cripple stud um, going down to the floor. Um, and we'll show you how to uh, frame that once we get to uh, laying out this wall. So then the only difference between this front door and this back door is the fact that we have a wider opening. So let's say we're doing a bay window, or in this case, we have a patio door going in here. Um, we have an opening that's over six feet. Anytime you have an opening that's over six feet, you need to have two shoulder studs. Um, and if you get towards um, an opening that's like 17 feet, 18 feet, like a garage door, then you need to start thinking about doing a triple shoulder stud. Um, and then uh, we also beef up our header just a little bit. That's a lot more weight. Looks like we have three rafters um, that this header is carrying. Um, so we need to uh, beef up our header a little bit. Again, we'll talk about that when we lay out our wall. Um, the only other um, important concept really to talk, or two more important co concepts to talk about, um, is our double top plate. So when we frame and build our wall, we're gonna do a bottom plate and a top plate. But then after our walls are standing, we're gonna do a double top plate. And that's important. Um, because it basically ties all f four of our walls together, or if you have a partition wall, it would tie that partition wall into your exterior wall. Um, so basically, if you look in the corner here, we built this side wall after we built um, this front and back wall. So our wall ends right here um, at this joint here. So this double top plate actually overlaps um, onto this uh, back wall here. 
so it ties this in and then this double top plate stops at this double top plate so it's basically like a, a lap joint and it ties those uh, two corners together all four corners has that same lap joint um, and that's basically the um, the functionality of that double top plate um, so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll um, kind of go through the whole process of laying out a wall that's basically taking your top and bottom plate and making marks along that plate where the studs go. We're going to talk about 16 and 24 inches on center. Um, and then we're also going to show you how to put the sheathing on um, the exterior of the walls. So why don't we uh, go select our top and bottom plates and we'll get started.